Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I have a, an exciting dream that um, I received from the Lord. It's another confirmation dream um, last night. Um, it's about the catching away, which the church calls rapture, and um, about confirmations of chaos and tribulations and persecution that he's been giving um, me and all of his people around the globe through dreams and visions that lines up with um, the scriptures, with the word of God. So <clears throat> last night, after I tucked my baby um, to bed and, um, you know, I went and studied the book of Acts, very exciting book. And I encourage you to study that book. It's just awesome. So many amazing, powerful testimony, you know, about the work and the ministry of the apostles the disciples of Jesus Christ, when they were here and when he walked the earth, how they were so bold, bold as lions, declaring the word of God, the truth of God in power and, um, you know, just courage. So they have truly inspired me these past, um, you know, few months as I'm studying the four gospels and now I'm on the book of Acts. So I was studying that and um, once I was uh, finished, um, I worshiped the Lord and just got on, you know, flat on my face, on my towel, on the floor, and I just interceded on behalf of everybody that the Lord put in my heart, you know, my closest family members, you know, um, children, husband, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, and some of you that uh, he's brought into my life through YouTube and Facebook. I was interceding um, for some of you guys as well and for the Lord to bless every one of you to draw him closer into a deeper, more intimate walk in relationship, fellowship, and revelation with him. And I was interceding also, of course, for our nation, America, and um, the leaders and the election and um, just for mercy for America and Jerusalem. You know, I just felt so very strongly after I listened to um, a live stream message by Pastor Jensen Franklin, which is one of my favorite men of God in our times. He is Holy Ghost filled, just humble, powerful, courageous, bold, and um, just, just a great man of God with an awesome ministry that's filled with um, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. So I was moved in my heart to intercede for Jerusalem and our nation. And um, so I cried out, you know, to the Lord. And um, then I prayed and asked God to just please give me confirmation. Father, I need confirmation. And um, please lead me on your path of truth and righteousness for your name's sake. I do not want to be deceived. Because even though I get many, many spiritual prophetic dreams, and many is about the end times and about the return of the Lord, about war, about tsunamis, about, um, you know, different tribulations, um, persecutions of the saints and things like that. I know they're all prophetic dreams. They line up with the word of God and the spirit of God. Um, testify and affirms it not just inside myself, which is sufficient, but it's in the Word of God. But He's also doing it with all of His people around the globe, from Africa to Asia, America, Australia, you know, everywhere where there are God's people that are born again with His Holy Spirit, those who are worshiping Him in spirit and in truth, He's revealing Himself through various uh, methods such as dreams and visions, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, prophecy, and, and um, Holy Ghost filled men and women of God, preachers and teachers around the world. So before I share this dream, it's about the confirmations um, of the chaos, tribulations, persecutions, kidnapped, catching away by the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I wanted to read up and share with you the root word of where the rapture word came from. Because we all know that the rapture, the word rapture is not in the Bible. We all know that. But um, this lines up with my dream um, perfectly. And it will give 
us a better understanding after I um, describe um, where this root word come, came from and the definition of it. The word rapture itself is from the Latin raptus. I might be saying it wrong. And it connotes either apocalyptic spiritual overtones or possessive and physical undertones. The origin of rapture dates to the late 16th century directly or via French rapia from medieval Latin raptura, seizure, from the Latin cognate raptus, meaning seized and taken, kidnapped by force, snatched, hold of, and then taken hostage, carried off or away. And um, I'm leaving that link for you to, if you're interested, to read up on all of uh, that it is so so good. I'm not sharing it because it would take too much time, but it's so good I encourage you to read that uh, Information in that link and then the Greek word from this term rapture is derived Appears in 1st Thessalonians 4 17 translated caught up the Latin translation of this verse used the word rapturo the Greek word it translate in harpaso which means to snatch or take away Elsewhere, it is used to describe how the spirit caught up Philip near Gaza and brought him to Caesarea, Acts 8.39, and to describe Paul's experience of being caught up into the third heaven, 2 Corinthians 12.2-4. Thus, there can be no doubt that the word is used in 1 Thessalonians 4.17 to indicate the actual removal of people from earth to heaven. So, here's my dream. Um, had this dream last night, probably around 3 o'clock. Um, before I went to bed, as I was saying, I was studying the book of Acts. And, okay, let me skip that. Alright, I was in a deep sleep. I heard the voice of the Lord spoke these things to me, my spirit. I was asking the Lord for confirmation. Let me turn this down a little bit. Um, I was asking the Lord for confirmation of the things that I've seen in the dream, such as wars and um, martial laws and things like that. I asked the Lord, please lead me in your path of righteousness, your path of truth. Please do not let me be deceived. I want to honor the Lord in all ways and facets. When I'm making these videos, I do not take it lightly that I am sharing the Word of God in the truth and revelation through the Holy Spirit that he's given me, whether it's through dreams or word of knowledge, word of wisdom, however he brings it to me. So when I make these videos, I do it with an utmost fear of the Lord because I know that every word that proceeds out of my mouth will be held accountable I will stand before the Son of Man, and He will hold me accountable for every word, every thought, every motive, every deeds, every lack of deeds. So I try to walk daily in the fear of the Lord, and I want to bring Him honor and glory. So whatever He gives me, I don't keep it to myself and just sit on it just because it benefits me and it blesses me, encourages me. I want to make sure that I get it out because I know that I'm not the only one that needs assurance, affirmations, and encouragement. There are plenty of us out there that's hungry and thirsty for the truth, and we can't get it from other people, from churches that are not filled and baptized with the Holy Ghost. So this is why I pray the prayers I prayed last night, and this is what I received. I heard the voice of the Lord spoke these things to me, to my spirit. I did not see Jesus. I saw and heard his voice from the clouds, the skies, the heaven, and I was asleep. He said, these things shall come, come to pass. There will be mass chaos, tribulations. You will be persecuted and mocked for my name's sake. Then he showed me a face of a family member who mocked me for my faith, who hates my God. Do not be troubled you will be kidnapped. When he said kidnapped, my spirit immediately immediately leapt 
with like an immediate shock like kidnapped because that word kidnapped is a negative um, word for me. I was abduct abducted once um, by an attempted rapist when I was 20 and he tied me up and tried to rape me but by the grace of God <laughs> as soon as he took his hands off of me for two seconds to unzip his pants. The Lord gave me boldness and power, and I jumped up in a very impossible uh, position and ran for my life. So when he said kidnapped in my dream, I was like, kidnapped? And um, so he went on to say, then he said, I will catch you away. And then I knew exactly what he meant, and my spirit was at peace and a deep joy filled my heart as I had heard the voice of my Savior of his assurance and faithfulness. I knew that all was well. He reminded me that your faith will be tested. There will be moments of darkness where you, you will feel that I might have abandoned you. But no, I will forsake you. You are mine and I love you and I will come to you. Take courage. I am with you always. Stand firm. Let no man sway you otherwise. Our God is bold, courageous, mighty, with matchless power. He is King of all kings, Lord of all lords, the Lord of hosts, commander of heaven's army, where just one of his And that night the angel of the Lord went out and struck down 185,000 in the camp of the Assyrians. And when people arose early in the morning, behold, these were all dead bodies, and that's in 2 Kings 19.35. So my dream ended, and I forgot to tell you that it ended. But um, the message of the dream is that he is coming. There is tribulations. There is persecution. Um, there will be times of darkness that we will have to endure, endure till the end. Heed and be of good cheer and be of courage. Be bold that he will never leave us or forsake us. But he is coming and he will catch us away. He will kidnap us, hallelujah. <laughs> He's the only one that I want to kidnap me, amen. So that was so encouraging. My heart was filled with peace. It was filled with unspeakable joy. Now before I end, I have many beautiful scriptures, powerful scriptures, and um, I found an article that is so timely, that is very powerful, motivational, that I want to share with you. So please bear with me. Imagine what he will do with the two-thirds of the angels in his army with his enemies in these last days in the final battle of Armageddon. Just try to imagine his majestic power. existence and with one breath of his mouth he shall slay the wicked hallelujah that's isaiah 11 4 but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity of the meek of the earth the meek shall inherit the earth amen let us be meek and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked wow what a god I don't know any God out there who can do that. None. There is no one like our God. Hallelujah. Who are the wicked? They are the enemies of God. All the friends of the world and all who does not gather with him, gather what? Gather the harvest of souls, the Father's business. They will all be destroyed by the breath of and word of Almighty God. And this is all scriptural. James 4 4 says, You adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever chooses to be a friend of the world renders himself an enemy of God. He says, Choices. We can choose God, we can choose godly people or we can choose the enemy and the enemies of God being friends with the world doesn't mean we go around judging the world no 
We must love them to Jesus. We must pray for them, intercede for them. But we are not to go, you know, club. you know you know the lifestyle of the world we all used to live it at one time or another I don't have to go into details do you think the scripture says without reason that the spirit he caused to dwell in us yearns with envy our God is an all-consuming fire he is a jealous God you know imagine us being married I'm married I would never settle for my husband surround flirt cheat fornicate commit adultery against me sometimes you know there's um, things that goes on that I may not know about but God knows but if I know about it I would not willingly choose to stay in that type of relationship forever for a season yes but with Almighty God, glory and honor, because He made us, He created us, and He died for us to redeem our soul from the pit of hell to Himself, because He loves us so, so, so much. But yet we choose to fornicate and commit adultery with you know, our selfish ways, you know, being friends with the world, serving ourselves in our idols and idolatry, our falsehood, our deceits, our lies, our covetousness. Do with the heartbeat of God, the Father's business, souls, souls, souls and harvest of souls that's what god is about that's why he laid down his life for us our soul out of the torments and pit of hell to himself because the father loves us so very much so jesus is coming when i don't know he did not give me a date but i believe very soon The king is coming. Clean your house, get your house in order. The king is coming. These were the words he plainly, clearly gave to me in broad daylight in September 2009. He will catch away those whose hearts are loyal and faithful to him, looking earnestly to him and for him daily, waiting at his gates to receive, hear, and obey his voice. Those who are denying themselves and choosing every day to pick up their cross to follow him. For he is their, their all-consuming desire, passion, purpose, and destiny. They have counted their lives here on earth as dead to the world, but alive in Christ alone. They delight in Almighty God and nothing and no one else can fill their souls. Only He, hallelujah. Living solely in wash our robe clean in the rivers of His grace through the precious shed blood of Jesus Christ, the only name given under heaven which man must be saved. Salvation is found in no other name but Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. I love that name, Yeshua HaMashiach. I love His name. Please do not live any other way. Another His love, forgiveness. His spirit will not strive with man forever. Just like you can't keep lying, cheating, deceiving your spouse forever and expect peace and prosperity, the days of recompense is at hand. The age of grace will soon come to an end. Let us not trample on the merciful gift of God, the cross of Jesus Christ paid for our sins. Christ only has one thing to look forward to, and that is the wrath of Almighty God against all his enemy. Please do not trample on the grace of Jesus Christ. 
you can choose to accept him as your savior now or you will have to stand before him as the judge please choose him as your savior he loves you he shall not keep silent the lord of glory this is an awesome art billion I think I'm saying his or her name wrong the heavens have long been silent it is one of the leading characteristics of this present age the closed the silent heavens but they will not be silent forever our God shall come and shall not keep silence Psalm 1 3 in his divine patience the Lord has been at the right hand of God for nearly 2,000 years over 2,000 years he will not of his own throne which he has the king pre which he asked the king priest must occupy nearly 2000 years have gone since he passed through the heavens and during that time he has been rejected by the world every possible dishonor insult and shame has been heaped upon his holy head through the instrumentality of the enemy the devil Never before has the rejection of the man in glory been so pronounced, so radical, so blasphemous. This statement is utterly, absolutely, horrifically true. Those who love the Lord Jesus Christ are constantly seized by an unspeakable grief on account of these awful denials of the Christ of God. This is so very true. I find myself grieving, interceding, grieving, and crying to the Lord pretty much almost every day, if not four or five days out of the week, for the sins, the evil, the blasphemous that comes from people towards my beautiful, amazing, loving, merciful, compassionate, gracious God. It breaks my heart, and it grieves and breaks the heart of God to see this and to hear it every day. And I believe that for any one of us through this suffering, you can't be a part of the vine and not be affected by the sap of the vine. We are the branches, he, are, he is the vine. <clears throat> and still he patiently waits but he will not always wait. His patience will someday be exhausted. He will pray his unprayed prayer in glory and ask the Father, the nations, and the uttermost parts of the earth. The firstborn back to this earth. When he comes in visible glory to this earth, it will mean the day of vengeance. That day of vengeance is at the door. The Lord has given me dreams of him on his white horse and his army following him cheerfully victoriously and they are clouds they are on their way hallelujah the day of vengeance is upon us when he comes in invisible glory to this earth it will mean the day of vengeance the vengeance of god will fall upon his enemies all the christ rejectors the wicked men and women who receive not the love of the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness, the enemies of the cross of Christ. Though they lived amiable lives, one of Satan's pet phrases, will meet him not as the patient lamb, but the judge, the lion of the church. Will it be when his patience is ended? What will it be when the kingdom and the patience of Jesus Christ give way to the kingdom and glory of Jesus Christ. I cannot wait. Rapidly the day is nearing when the Lord Jesus Christ will be completely rejected. As long as the true church is still here, this complete rejection is an impossibility. They leave this earth and that church is the true body of Christ with the indwelling Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit of God inside them. That is the true church, the bride of Christ.
not every mouth that professes the name of Jesus is his bride or his church. Only those with his Holy Spirit inside them are his. Scripture says so. It's in Romans. Then conditions are of the Christ and the reception of Antichrist who will then appear. And when the beast is worshipped, Revelation 23, and the world defies God and his anointed as never before, when the nations of apostate Christendom stand in battle array, Revelation 19, 19, then he will come as the king whose patience is ended and claim what will it mean when his patience is ended? Who can describe it? What judgments will fall? then upon a wicked world and be meted out upon the enemies of Christ. The Lord gave me a dream on November 28, 2015. I saw the Lord Jesus Christ two feet away from me. His Father has said the decree judgment upon this earth, upon mankind, has already been set. And the rapture took place the catching away of the bride took place right after the wrath, or right before the wrath. He gave me that in a dream, and it's under my YouTube channels, King's Grace 777, Decree Judgment Rapture. You can look at The day of vengeance is rapidly approaching. It is the day of vengeance for the world. It is the day of the glory of Christ. It is the day of the glory of the saints. It is the day of our glory as a believer. Let us suffer with him that we may also be glorified together. Let us be patient as long as he is patient. It's hard, yes, but we can do it for all things are possible with God. Amen. We can do it. We can be firm. We can witness for him in the power of the Holy Spirit. Only in Christ can we do this. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth. The gospel. Give for the gospel. Live the gospel. A little while longer and his patience will end. Do you feel this, saints? I know I do a little while longer. But meanwhile, while we wait, we must go forward with the gospel of Jesus Christ and do not be ashamed of the gospel. It is the power to save people. Amen? Just like it saved us. Trusting in the Lord thy God, onward go, holding fast his faithful word, onward go, not denying his worthy name, though it brings reproach and shame, spreading still his wondrous fame, onward go. Has he said him with holy fear, onward go, Christ thy portion, Christ thy stay, heavenly bread upon the way, leading on to glorious day onward go be thou faithful to the end amen let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife had made herself ready revelation 19 7. god bless you people of jesus christ let us not be ashamed of the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching.